There was a question on, um, or a comment on the video where I had created these little people about people walking across the scene. And I will say that's a little bit trickier and not something probably that I do a lot of unless they're in the photo side on. Um, so I've pulled up a few photos and I think it's just more a matter of pointing out a couple of, um, a couple of key things uh, that might help you if you're doing um, figures side on. And the first point is to be aware that the head is forward of the shoulders. So if you draw shoulders and you draw a head coming straight up like we would out of a, a straight on figure, your person looks too straight, their posture is not natural. So this head forward of the body is really important. Um, like this fellow is actually quite straight up and down, but he almost looks like he's leaning back because of that position of the head. Uh, where in most of them you see, you know, heads forward. Um, so it's good to just pay attention. And the other thing I think that really will um, be the key to this is, is the shape of the heel is really the the thing that I mostly would focus on if I was drawing somebody walking across the scene. So um, maybe we'll just focus on this little grouping. And, and these are just small figures, the size that we did uh, the people here. We've got a little grouping of people which works perfectly. So like I said, the, the head, um, I've just automatically done it almost straight on. So almost angling that head forward. Generally there's going to be an arm in view. A lady, there's a little, sometimes a bit of a bust. This girl's got a dress on and she's got one foot, one leg straight down. And the other is back behind. So you can see straight off my drawing takes a little bit more um, a little bit more thought than the straight on ones so if I get the heel right and the shape of the leg I'll let you in on a little secret about legs um, if you're drawing leg if you're drawing side on legs one part of the leg is straight and one part is curved so the top of the leg if we're drawing it bigger Oh, I'll just do it over here. The top part of the leg um, is more curved forward, like our thigh muscle, and it comes down to, for instance, the knee. So I'm just going to draw as if there's the knee. But the back of the leg is fairly straight. And then we do the reverse when we get to the, the part underneath the knee. The back is more curved with the calf and the front is more straight and it's kind of a little um, you know a little easy technique that helps get shape into your legs so if you I just took a little bit long there for the and a bit skinny at the at the base so if you think one part's straight, almost convex, and that's the front of the bottom of the leg and the back of the top of the leg, and the top front is curved and the bottom back is curved. So it's like the opposite angle. And the other thing I was saying looking at the photo, the heel is the most important that you get this kick out. If you get nothing else to ride on a leg, you'll have the sense of the foot if you get the the heel so this isn't the exact position of the knee but it just gives you an idea so rounded at the top front straight at the back rounded at the back straight at the front sorry i just did that one a bit short the the rounded front part comes a bit lower than that line just because of the knee and then down. And now I've joined onto that heel, so that looks strange. But back to these these people walking side on. So I've done her too skinny. Like I said in the other video, 
really skinny people are actually hard to make look realistic in a painting so we want to have a little bit more flesh on her she's got a backpack which is awesome and she's got an arm coming out here um, and if they've got shoes on remember up here I said I don't really put feet when they're side on they pretty much need a shoe so the whole um, the whole painting process becomes a little bit more difficult with these side on walking figures I've got a few around where they are um, a few paintings around the studio I should say where they are a similar amount of detail and I've just made the legs and more separate as though they're walking his shirt buttons there let's make him a little bit rounder and so I'll come back to this style where they're just a bit he's got trousers on so that's easier than the bare legs And so the foot. But you know what? This is um. They're a little bit trickier. And usually I only do them if I've got the photo of them um, to actually put them in my scene as they are. And then we've got a fellow. And I've got another video about to come or might already have loaded by the time I load this one that is about um, drawing and painting the faces. So if your figure is a little bit bigger, like this one. So his leg then is swinging back. I've got to think about where his weight is. So if I was to drop a plumb line down... I can't see the feet uh, on this man here. I'm doing the one that's that's cut off. So I'm going to kind of guess that, you know, from having done a little bit of life drawing, that his foot, <laughs> that's an enormous foot. Um, and he's really long in the legs. So let me increase his body length. And then he's got his weight is shifted because he's walking. Got an arm, so there's like an elbow happening there. And remember, if you're struggling with the length of an arm or a hand, if it was hanging straight, it comes below the person's bottom. So to paint these in roughly, he needs a little bit more of a back of a head. So remember like I did up here, I did a dark, my dark is usually ultramarine blue and brown matter. This lady has a purpley coloured dress on. I'm sorry, I'm bumping the camera a little bit because I've put the, um, put the palette on the bottom of the camera stand. So she's got a sleeve and I like to paint it all touching so I'll come in with a skin tone she's got bare legs I've just got a little bit of um, so yellow ochre with maybe a touch of alizarin or cad yellow or cad red sorry just to make a skin tone she needs a shoe so I won't take it all the way down and then I would drop cad red light in for the face over the top of the dark. And so I want to leave some dark of hair, um, a 
at the back of the face. She's got a red backpack on, so I'm going to leave that for a little minute. And she's got blue joggers. And remember, I'm going to catch that into the shadow. So I'm, I'm not too worried about the shoes. My palette's very dry. I haven't used it for a few days. I've been working out of my little tiny travel one. He's got a very pale green shirt on. Might leave a little light hitting the front of it. But I'll come back with a little bit of shadow in a minute and darken it up in here. I'm not worried like up here where those colours blend in to each other. You know, that's my preference. Is that they do run coming back in with thicker Vegemite consistency pigment for the legs. Because remember, if we do these quick and we get a bit of dry brush stroke, they have more movement. So often I wouldn't even correct that, um, you know, to join up that colour. I like the, I like the broken stroke. It's a little bit fat there at the ankle, so I particularly wouldn't be wanting to um, do anything to strengthen it. I want a slightly darker green, so I just mixed a little bit of my mauve into the green just to drop in a bit of shadow and I'm using the same brush for the whole figure just for quickness uh, I want to bring his face on and side on also he might have a little bit of neck a little suggestion of hands his hands too long there <laughs> his arm sorry so if that happens just wait for it to set a little bit and then push it back. And I'll just come in back with the paint colour and shorten that arm. And just so all I did then was clean the brush, dry it off. Um, and I just want to soften that side of the shadow. And then the shadow on the ground will help to catch those feet so this guy is a little bit more um, a little bit bigger and this is a, a good lesson in perspective as well I lined their heads up that shows this man is closer to us um, but all of your heads, no matter what size the figures are, if you're standing as the viewer or the photographer or the painter uh, on a flat level street, then all of the heads of the people, allowing for a slight variation in height, their heads nearly all line up. And they line up with your eye level as the viewer. So if I was drawing a street scene, I'd look at whether there's a doorway or something in the distance that would give me an indication of height for the first person that I draw. So he's got a blue shirt. I want a little bit of shadow down along the, the back, a little touch. And you can see I put shadow on his face as well. I put a skin tone and then I dropped some shadow in. So I cleaned the brush and I'm just going to spread that a little bit this gentleman's not got very much hair he's got a little buzz cut but I might just put a little bit of dark up in along the top and that's really a dark mauve it's not a it's not a brown brown color and then I'll just push a little bit more skin tone the face pick up that skin tone again for his arm and I'm doing that again while the blue is wet the blue of the shirt 
quite happy for that to run in. And I'm mixing a thicker Vegemite um, consistency pigment, so not much water. For his trousers. These are bigger figures, so, you know, I'm not aiming for these little quick stripes more so. I do need to get a bit of, uh, a little bit more definition in the legs. So, a lot in the front of this leg. And then when that's a little bit drier, I'll drop more shadow in there. And we were making up shoes, so let's just pretend he's got a dark shoe on. And again, the heel protrudes out. Um, so that's kind of important if you can. Hold that. And a little bit more dark. So now if I want to come in and get darker on this pant somewhere, remember my brush and my paint has to be drier than the paint that's on the paper. So this is still damp near the front of the trousers. So I'm coming in with thicker pigment. I want to have a little bit of shadow along his arm. And a little bit of shadow just in the jaw. I would actually need to draw a bit of an ear as well. I've missed his ear, but he needs that um, just suggestion in pencil. And then again, his shadow. So I had a little bit of light on the front of the pants, so the shadow has to run back this way. And again, catch those feet in. But you can see my pigment is thicker on the shoe. Thicker and more solid, so when I do the shadow, it's a lighter, um, thinner, thinner wash of pigment, so the shoe will still um, have a little bit of definition in there. And when it's nearly dry, because this is a bigger figure than, than these ones, if I wanted to put a little bit more creasing and things in the shirt, then I would come in and do that with a little bit more detail. Or if I wanted to soften the shadow along the arm, just a clean brush to lift a bit of that back. He also actually has a touch of a hand showing here. Which I should have seen to draw on earlier. So again, that needs shadow because it's in the back. So I'd put it on in the skin tone, then add some shadow to it. If the shadow becomes too strong, so it's too too purpley, then I come back in with a little bit more skin tone into it while it's damp. But hopefully that helps with side walking figures, but really it's just observing your photo and um, putting as much or as little detail in as you want. But the key thing is the head forward, not the head straight up. 